The downtown utility replacement and street project is summarized on a plaque on a brick sidewalk on 1st Street, dated November 2005 to 2009. It reads, the city of Fort Myers project beautified the downtown area and replaced all underground utilities in over 50 city blocks. More than 500,000 historic bricks that shaped our city streets in an earlier time have been recycled and are now visible on 1st Street, Henry Street, and Main Street. Thank you to the citizens and friends who live, work, and visit the River District for your support in restoring the charm of old Fort Myers. From the 70s through the 90s, downtown Fort Myers was largely vacant and neglected, with many of the grand old buildings marred by years of attempts by owners to update the building's facades to keep up with the times. All that changed after the turn of the century when Andres Duny, an American architect and urban planner, created a comprehensive plan for the revitalization of downtown Fort Myers. The Community Redevelopment Agency followed his plan and created a revitalized and vibrant city where people can live, work, shop, dine, socialize, and be entertained with so many amenities. The Fort Myers Historic River District has more buildings on the National Registry of Historic Places than any other city in southwest Florida. The Fort Myers Regional Library has become a light in the darkness by reinventing itself from a building filled with books to a high-tech, state-of-the-art facility that is also available online 24-7. It is a community hub providing both information, entertainment, and a wide range of programs for all ages. The design of the library, completed in 2013, is a perfect fit in the landscape of the Fort Myers Historic River District. Non ti trai farfalloni amoroso, notte giorno di torno trato, delle belle torbando a riposo, ma ci sento a tucino d'amor, delle belle torbando a riposo, ma ci sento a tucino d'amor. Fra guerrieri po far bacco, Grandu stacchi stretto sacco, schioppo in spalla, giabla a fianco, collo dritto, l'uso franco, un gran casco, un gran turbante, molto onor, poco cantante, poco cantante, poco cantante. Ed invece del fandango, una marcia per il fango, per montagni, per valloni, con le nevi e salioni, al concetto di tromboni, di pampate e di cannoni, che le porre tutti i toni, all'orecchio fan fischiar, non più vrai, coi penachini, non più vrai, Quel cappello, non più vrai, quella chioma, non più vrai, quell'aria brillante. Non più vrai, farfalloni amoroso, notte giorno di torno trato, delle belle tornando a riposo, ma ci sento a tucino d'amor. Delle belle tornando a riposo, Marci setto ad un cino d'amor, che rovino alla vittoria, alla gloria militar, che rovino alla vittoria, alla gloria militar.
returns tonight, hundreds of letters appear on the walkway, steps, and facade of the Sydney and Byrne Davis Arts Centre at First and Jackson Streets. In front of the building, two bronze cylinders with letters cut into them and lit from within, cast light on the building in a magical display of light. One cylinder contains the names of 500 botanical plants that were among the thousands of plants that Thomas Edison, a pioneer Fort Myers winter resident, studied in his pursuit of alternate forms of rubber. The second cylinder contains the letters of a Creek Indian legend. The legend was told to James Oglethorpe by Chiquilli, a Creek leader. The legend is about the migration of Native Americans to the southeast. The building is on the site of a Calusan Indian settlement. The kinetic sculpture was crafted by Jim Sanborn. The sculpture is bronze with text cut with a water jet cutter. It has a pinpoint light source within the cylinders. The sculpture, also known as Lux, named for a unit of illumination, was installed in 2001 in front of the museum. In 1889, Franklin Arms had as its roots the Hill House, and was operated as a boarding house by Mary F. Hill, with the help of her two daughters. In 1918, Walter P. Franklin bought Hill House and renamed it the Franklin Arms Hotel. He remodeled the building and expanded it around the original two-story wood frame structure and its spacious porches, surrounding the exterior with brick. In 1924, a seven-story addition was built at a cost of $300,000, with an estimated 84 rooms, steam heat, and a roof garden. The addition was known as the first skyscraper in Fort Myers. By the end of World War II, the hotel had added a cocktail bar, private baths, and a veranda to the list of amenities. Gilmer Heitman Jr. later bought the Franklin Arms Hotel, renovated, and reopened it in the 1970s. It became the Edison Regency Hotel. The building is Fort Myers' only tall building to express the Beaux-Arts architectural style of the early 1900s. Today, the 1924 high-rise addition is the Franklin Arms Court, and the street front section of the building houses Rochelle and Andres, LPA. Harvey Heitman said, I have always stood squarely for everything that would help toward the advancement and upbuilding of Fort Myers. He was known as the man who built First Street. He built the Heitman Grocery, the first brick building in town, and the Bradford Hotel, which adjoined his grocery. He built the Earnhardt Building across the street from the hotel, livery stables, and helped found the bank of Fort Myers.
The Bradford building occupies most of a city block and was built in the early 1900s by Harvey Heitman with a loan from Tootie McGregor with the stipulation that the new hotel be named after her son, Bradford. The McGregors were art patrons and developed the boulevard that bears their name. The building was later converted into apartments over the street-level storefronts in the Arcade Theater. The theater opened in 1914 as a touring vaudeville house before becoming a movie theater in the 1920s. In 2019, the Florida Repertory Theater, which occupies the Arcade Theater, bought the Bradford Building. Harvey Heitman store, built in 1898, still stands next to the Bradford building. Most influential men in building and developing downtown Fort Myers in the early 20th century were Harvey Heitman, John Morgan Dean, and Peter Tumlier. In 1912, Peter Tumlier, a wealthy developer and banker from Brenton Harbor, Michigan, bought the 1905 Leon Building, also known as the Stone Block, on the southwest corner of First and Hendry from Dr. Benjamin P. Matheson. He proceeded to rebuild and renovate the block, expanding and remodeling the Leon Hotel and creating Tumlier Court between 1913 and 1915. Tumlier Court, today known as Patio de Leon, extends from 1st Street to Main Street and is constructed in the Mediterranean Revival style. From 1913 to 1923, Tumlier bought 52 separate parcels of real estate in Fort Myers and Lee County, becoming the county's second largest property owner. Harvey Heitman was first.
Morgan Dean from Rhode Island invested in land development, construction, and citrus and packing companies that would fuel the economic and residential expansion of Fort Myers. He created Dean Park, the first subdivision developed in Fort Myers, and built the Morgan Hotel downtown, laying out the street that now bears his name. The Morgan Hotel was renovated into a mixed-use building and renamed the Dean. John Dean's death in 1938 made headlines in the news press, which eulogized him as a kindly and companionable gentleman who saw beauty where he looked, enjoyed developing it, and had the means and business ability to make dreams come true. Harvey Heitman who owned the most property in Fort Myers, built the two-story structure known as the Heitman-Evans Building on the northwest corner of First and Hendry. In 1927, Lucius Kurtwright built the three-story Cress building on the southwest corner of First and Broadway. The building was leased to the Cress Company for 50 years. It's currently a multi-use building with storefronts at street level. In 1998, the United States Courthouse was built on the corner of Monroe and First Street. The General Services Administration in Washington commissioned photographic artist Barbara Jo Revelle to create a mural on the exterior of the building. The 20 by 100 foot photo based, computer generated ceramic tile mural is titled An Alternative History of Fort Myers. The mural was installed over a brick paved courtyard that the Federal Building shares with the Hotel Indigo and Starbucks. In 2006, the building was awarded the International Office Building of the Year Award. From left to right, the mural depicts Chief Billy Bullegs, a section of stockade of the Old Fort for which the city is named, a contingent of the 2nd Regiment of the United States Colored Troops that defended the fort from Confederate attack in the Civil War, the Atlantic Coast Line Railroad locomotive that brought rail service to the town in 1904, and a cattle rancher leaning against one of his steers. Barbara Jo Revelle recreates Fort Myers' early history, a 46-year period filled with conflict, struggle, and shame.
Chris Strayhorn is a sixth-generation Floridian born in Fort Myers. He practices law with the firm of Strayhorn and Persons, and has served as assistant state attorney, director of the Fort Myers Downtown Property Owners Association, board member of the Lee County Housing Development Corporation, and a member of the Lee County Affordable Housing Task Force.